Alrighty, we're down here in my noisy garage with the AC fan blowing and the fluorescent light buzzing. And we're going to cover the top five reasons for jams and stovepipes on the Ruger 1022. Uh, the Ruger 1022 is one of my favorite guns to shoot. A lot of fun, inexpensive years of enjoyment, but it does have its issues, and we're going to cover those. I uh, recommend that you stay watch the video through we're going to start with the simple ones all the way up to the more complex ones reason number five you may have a certain type of ammunition that your Ruger 1022 does not like and many suggest that you try different types of ammunition I've got mine adjusted to where it will run virtually any uh, 22 LR ammunition that I purchase Reason number four, you may have a dirty gun. There's lots of uh, cleaning fluids out there and disassembly videos uh, that uh, show you how to clean your gun. So you definitely want to check that. Reason number three, you may need a little bit of gun oil or gun lube. Uh, there's lots of different uh, lubes and oils out there. Feel free to put comments below what you use. But I take uh, any sort of gun oil, typically, the Ruger 1022 works well with most of these. And I put a little bit of oil on the bolt face here and a little bit on the top upper area of the receiver. Reason number two, you may have a bad extractor. That is this little hook looking device on the face of the bolt. There are lots of videos out there that show you how to replace this. It actually pulls the used shell out of the barrel and I put uh, bolt corks and extractors in my guns. And the number one reason for jams and stove pipes in the Ruger 1022 are the magazines. These are great magazines but over time they get dirty and they get wobbly and they can cause all types of feeding and uh, ejection problems, stove piping problems. And if you want to hang on for a minute, uh, we can talk about uh, what I've done uh, for my magazines that have got them working with virtually any sort of uh, 22 long rifle rounds that I put into them. Uh, there are cleaning videos uh, elsewhere on YouTube where you can be shown how to take apart magazines and clean them. Okay, let's talk for a moment about why the 10 round boxes typically work better than the 15s and 25s. Uh, what my finding is, is that the 10 rounders are longer. They're actually a different size of a magazine uh, from front to back. And so the fact that the, the 10 is longer and the 15 and the 25 is tapered at the top, you get more wobble. Now look at the difference there. Look how taller the 10 is uh, on the, the right as compared uh, to the 15. Now, even the 10 rounders, which are typically more stable, do get a little wobbly and they can cause problems also. Alright, so notice how the BX15s and the 25s can get wobbly. So this needs to be corrected because it can cause some definite jamming and stove piping problems. Okay, so here's how the, the barrel, the magazine, and the bolt with the extractor work together to pull out a round. So your barrel sits typically like this. And notice how if your magazine is not aligned properly and wobbly, you're going to have issues, feeding issues, stove piping issues. So what happens here is your bolt slides across the top of the magazine up to the barrel and the extractor meets in that one slot there and pulls out around. So you have an expended round on the barrel side and it'll go in and pluck it out. 
these rounds after they're shot, they're a little swollen up, so I don't want to put it inside the barrel at this moment. So once it pulls it out of the barrel, it runs across the top of the magazine, and watch what happens. Boom! That's proper ejection of a spent round because this edge right here is the 1022 ejector. It's actually on the magazine. So if your magazine is wobbly and not lined up, you could actually have a round eject early. I'll show you that. Put this round in here. And say if your magazine's off, tilted one way, and it rubs, you could have it ejected early and then jam up the receiver. Important thing to note, this piece right here on the trigger assembly, this is your secondary ejector. This is used to eject rounds when you do not have a magazine in. So the primary ejector is actually on the magazine itself. So what you end up with, with the 15s and 25s, you end up with the magazine uh, that's uh, shorter, you get more wobbles, and it won't align correctly when it's against the barrel. So the idea is, notice how the plunger uh, on the trigger assembly pushes the magazine forward. So you want the magazine as forward as you can as possible. Uh, that'll help it align up. Now notice that uh, on the back of the magazine you have this bumper. Uh, this helps push the magazine a little bit forward. The plunger actually stop. It has a stop. It can't go forever and push forward. So what I've done is I've taken a little bit of tape and built up the bumper. I guess I could have done any sort of other material that I wanted to use, uh, you know, rubber or plastic, if I wanted to go to that length. But this is uh, what I've done on my magazine. And uh, I want to show you a short video of how it worked. Okay, we're going to put the magazine uh, in with the tape mod. A couple rounds. Five rounds. I'm going to take this out. Clear it and take the tape mod off. Put it back in. Let's nose it notably wobblier. Let's see how many we can get the chamber. Jam. Okay, just a couple of points on some videos I've seen on the internet. One guy suggests that you bend the secondary ejector. Uh, that's this little device here. I don't suggest you do that at all. Um, as you see, when the bolt is sliding across the trigger assembly, see how that slot is made to fit there and help to uh, eject your spent round. So you could actually damage your gun or your bolt or even more if you do that. Uh, there's another video out there where it uh, has a lot of views. A guy suggests that you shave this post down here uh, to get uh, this plunger to push forward a little bit more. That uh, is a very, very minor adjustment. It may help some uh, for you. Uh, the idea is that uh, you, uh, you want the magazine to be pushed as forward as possible against the barrel. Because uh, what happens is that when your magazine is loose and it comes back, uh, you can have problems. But the, uh, the adjustment of uh, this uh, magazine release here uh, is minor. It may help some, but keep in mind it can only go so far. Uh, you could actually pull the spring out and stretch it out to make your spring uh, more firm. So I just wanted to, to mention that. Thank <laughs> you.